picking up the soap mm -hmm. in the shower. That's the least of your problems, right? Because they'll get you. They will get you. They'll string you up. And considering the only thing you have to kill anyone with is like a really blunt razor, yeah. or <laughs> maybe, right? There's nothing to actually kill anyone with. Uh -huh. Maybe some plastic chairs. Yeah. So your death will probably be quite long and quite painful. Yeah. Hello, hello, everybody. Hey. Welcome back to uh, Big English Stand Up Podcast. My name is Steve Foreman. I'm here with Cheba Chebatkov. Hey, Yevgeny. hi, how are we doing? Hey. Hey, everybody. Uh, we are illuminating the secret laws of human nature. We're here to make people happy uh, and here to find out what makes humans human. Um, oh, my God. We're here to help. That's wow. what, that's why I'm here. I don't know why you're here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here just you know, right to talk that? talk about some stuff, and <laughs> discuss people. You know. Wow. Well, that's yeah, that's I know, mission. I, I gotta come up with something that kind of sounds kind of yeah. half clever. I, I get you. I get like a mission statement, like a, <laughs> like a slogan. I and get you. You don't have to start talking half the way through it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. But yeah, listen. I woke up this morning. Um, excited at the news, not that uh, uh, Russia's voted to have the same ruler for the next 16 years. What? What? No. <laughs> what? Nothing? I don't, did you say something? Did you? No. <laughs> no, okay. no, no. No, no. For, let's forget about that. No, I was excited to hear that they, the FBI uh -huh. arrested uh, Jelan Maxwell. Have you followed this, this story? Not excellent. The one about uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Ah, ah, oh, it's an incredible yes. story. Yes, I mean, I, know I remember I was about. talking to this girl some some while ago, and she was just like, nah, 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 nah. like I, and, and she she just said something like, "Well, I think the powerful, you know, they all take good care of themselves. You know, they care of each other and mm -hmm. themselves. They don't really care about everything's a conspiracy." She's got this whole everything's a conspiracy type mentality, and I said to her. Well, have you been following the Jeffrey Epstein no. scandal? And she goes, no, what's that? I'm like, no, wow. what's that? <laughs> oh, wow. Like these these, these, uh, these onion layers are being mm -hmm. uncovered here yeah. right in broad daylight. The way that the super rich are behaving, the systems, the way that they go on, you know, and... Uh, she was, so Jelan Maxwell was kind of his girlfriend, but she would also procure underage girls for him yes. and groom him into having sex with him. <laughs> That's all she would do. And, um, and they, I, heard, yeah. I heard, by the way, that, mm. that uh, I'm sorry, that, that her father, mm. he was uh, kind of a sp very famous spy. He was. No, yeah. no, he wasn't a spy. He was a, um, he was a um, newspaper mogul in the ah, UK. I remember ah. him. Yeah, Robert Maxwell. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, in uh, the 80s. Oh. Yeah, he was a big, he was like a billionaire, kind of like a Richard wow. Branson type. Mm. He ran, ran the newspapers and then he stole the pension fund. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I Where's the pension it. fund? I don't know, but I wanted to. But but yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, can, they, can I just leave for a while? Can I just leave for a while, please? Of all the things you could steal, right? Wow. A pension fund. A pension fund for your employees. Oh my god. That's got to be, right? Yeah. Or, or <laughs> I mean, that's that's up there with stealing. You know, food from the orphanage or something, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people got it upset. And, well, what do you have to expect from, from his daughter, Dan? Oh, I don't know, mate. But, I mean, the, the, I was reading the article this morning really excited. The FBI, because the FBI, I'm, I'm glad to see the FBI back mm -hmm. you know, on, the, on the front page of the newspaper. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think they've had a very good time lately. <laughs> Have they? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, the CIA, the NSA, a lot of other government agencies have been more mm -hmm. in the news, and suddenly the FBI have been doing their job. They've been yeah. doing their job, and they're not—they're not shown very well in any of the movies. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have an FBI agent, he's a real stiff. Mm -hmm. um, I think they tried to improve their image with um, with uh, Mulder and Scully, weren't they? Yeah. FBI. Hey, that was really popular in Russia, wasn't it? The, oh yeah. The um, oh yeah, very. What was his name? Mul Mulder, Michael. What's his name? Matthew. I've uh, forgotten his name. Who? Actor or yeah. the, or the yeah. hero? The actor. The actor. Yeah. Uh, 
It's just popped out of my head. I quite like him too. What's his name? Uh, he's Ukrainian. He's got Ukrainian yeah, roots. Yeah, yeah, so, Ukrainian roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll so to anyway, that there were 15 today. bank accounts with 20 million dollars moving around. Some of which went into, um, into uh, were connected with Epstein's um, assets. And there's a, uh, you know, um, and and then the one of the headlines in the newspaper was, it puts the pressure goes back onto Prince Andrew, right? Mm -hmm. Whoa! Okay. So do you want know I mean? This scandal has everything. If you if if you like your scandal to have some royals in it, this is the scandal for you because oh, Prince Andrew's please. under pressure again. Please, Steve, can yes. you explain yes. me right here, right now? Sure. How exactly? Yes. I know them all personally. He yeah. he connected with with the Queen. What? What She's is his? Her son. Just as, ah. Yeah, wow. dog. Well, I thought it's kind of nappy. Oh, or, no, son. Wow. Wow. Okay. He's her middle son. Okay. That's it. Okay. <laughs> no question mark. We did, we no didn't, question mark. We, I thought, thought, we didn't need yeah. to draw a big, <laughs> well, a big elaborate family actually, tree for that one. Yeah, I imagine absolutely for this show. You're like, all right, Paul, just follow me. Look yeah. at him. Look at the man. Here go with Queen. That is her son. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> one line. I just drew one little line there. There we go. That's oh, wow. Uh, Who wants the pen? Who needs the anyone? Okay. And people yeah. say he's, yeah. uh, he's a big pizza lover, right? Yeah, oh, that's hilarious. The Pizza <laughs> Express thing. Oh, Andrew, what have you done, mate? What have you done? Yeah, so um, there you go. But there's a... You know, I was... <laughs> <laughs> The way the way my mind works. Welcome, everybody. But I was thinking to myself, you know, there's a special place in hell for people like her, uh -huh. right? Grooming other un underage w girls to have sex with somebody. And then when they didn't uh, do what they said, she would threaten them. She would oh, threaten man. to destroy them later on <clears throat> and things like that, right? If they, if they said they would speak to the press. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> now, if you're if you're a kiddie, if you're a fiddler, right? Mm -hmm. If you like underage people, no. In Britain, we call that a nonce. You're a nonce, right? <laughs> it's a wonderful word. Don't get to use it enough. And everybody, like every in all the movies, all the films, and everything, and books, people always say, you know what happens to nonces inside when they go to prison, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a bank robber, even a murderer, yeah. even yeah. a whatever, beat your wife, whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you if you fool around with children mm -hmm. and you go to prison, you know you, it does it doesn't it's not good it's not yeah. good for, you know like picking up the soap mm -hmm. in the shower that's the least of your problems right because they'll get you they will get you they'll string you up and considering the only thing you have to kill anyone with is like a really blunt razor yeah. or <laughs> maybe right there's nothing to actually kill anyone with uh -huh. maybe some plastic chairs yeah so your death will probably be quite long and quite painful yeah so now my question is what happens in prison to a female nonce mm. Mm. <laughs> Like if she goes to prison, wow. Okay, um, uh, now we've all, I think, we've both had women angry at us. Yeah, in, of course. In, a, in our time, <laughs> we, yeah, we know what that's like. Yeah, uh, don't we, everybody? Uh, <laughs> actually, quite recently, though. No, anyway, but um, so can you imagine? She's going into an institution with a few hundred angry women, angry at her. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to know. What the consequences are going to be for her? She's going to have to be in ma maximum security, probably. Right? Yeah. I mean, even Jeffrey Epstein didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> what chance? What chance does she have? By the way, everybody, we're laughing at the plight of people who trafficked underage children. So I think we're we're morally we have the we're, we're yeah we're good to people. Make, yeah, we're yeah. allowed to make fun of it. Mm. But there's a special. There's a special place in hell for her. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be great, though? That's just the, this, this expression that we have. Imagine you got to hell. Mm -hmm. And the person on the door, the, the, the demon or whatever, he said to you, Ah, 
you know, we've been expecting you. We've actually got a special place for you here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you'd be quite, you'd be quite, uh, you'd be quite um, proud. You'd be like, oh, really? Huh? <laughs> you were, you've been waiting. You've got a special place in hell for me. Because that's a life's work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a life's work. I hope there's a special place in hell for you. Jean. Thank you when, so much. You- <laughs> I just, uh, when you said, when you said about hell, I was thinking, well, I think the scariest thing you can mm. imagine if you got in hell and you're just coming up inside and the first person you see is like the best of all your friends mm. who were like you thought mm. he was perfect like no mm. you know <laughs> he leaves like <laughs> you know uh with no uh, no smoking no drinking yeah. no hanging out with girls a catholic so- priest maybe yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's just laying on the floor mm. and so- <laughs> and some hell boys just <laughs> kicking him it's like ah and you're like, well, what's gonna happen with me, motherfucker? I don't <laughs> that's that's the worst situation you can imagine. Yeah. All and- I ask is that as long as I don't ever have to hear mm-hmm. another Ed Sheeran song ever again, <laughs> I'm cool with it. <laughs> I'm cool with the next life. You know? That's Yo. it. <laughs> and I was just waiting for you outside. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was looking at my phone and I put my glasses on and this, this woman walks past, yes. f- quite attractive, you mm-hmm. know, not, she's on her way to work, she's not, she's not throwing it around, but she's quite attractive woman and she proper checked me out mm-hmm. and I just looked at, my gla- I t- looked at my glasses and thought, oh my God, is this, <laughs> is, this, is this all I've needed all this time, yeah. all I had to do? Was put on a. Uh, imagine though. Imagine all you had to do to become irresistible to women would be to just wear a pair of glasses, and then suddenly, da 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 da, and they're, they're all around you, and then you, you beat them off, you take them off, and they all just. <laughs> all this time, all I needed to do was put on a pair of glasses, and sudden, suddenly the chicks are crazy about me. It just frames my my particular face in a yeah. nice way. Bit like Superman, like a super mm-hmm. you know, Clark Kent in reverse. Yeah, it's funny they they can't recognize you without all those glasses. <laughs> you know, it's just two two different persons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you exactly. just put on put on your glasses. Call these women. Oh you're just hanging out all night, and after that in the morning, you just take them off. Yeah. She was like, "Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Where this intelligent guy?" <gasps> I mean, look, you know, this DC comic. Marvel comic stuff is so popular, but mm-hmm. come on, man. Someone needs to say it. What? I always had a huge problem with the fact that Clark Kent, all he did mm-hmm. was put on his glasses and Lois Lane didn't know that she couldn't tell the difference between Superman. <laughs> and I mean, I always had a massive problem with that. Even as a kid, I was like, mm. see, y'all. I don't think women are that stupid. Like, you know what I mean? Is there something? I don't remember reading that Lois Lane's got something wrong with her eyesight yeah. or something like that. And, but, and it perpetuates this bullshit that's just, it's, it's completely permeated Western culture now. Mm-hmm. And I'm not too sure that I'm happy about it, to be honest. Well, but what about uh, changing suits? That's also <laughs> means a lot. He's <laughs> the lycra. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he's he's actually wow. I never thought about it actually. I he, watched Tim Burton's Batman on Netflix the other night. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. But it's got Jack Nicholson in it. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. He kills. Jack Nicholson's amazing. So much fun playing a nut job again. Mm-hmm. Kim Basinger. We were all completely in love with her yeah. back then. The soundtrack was made by Prince. Come on! Mm-hmm. Come on! It was just a... It's a, And directed by Tim Burton. It's a masterpiece. Yes. It was great fun. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But that's got nothing to do with, you know, a, a superhero sticking on his glasses and suddenly becoming someone else. <laughs> this is two different things. You know what do I mean? Do you got your favorite superhero? No, or... mate. I hate I hate all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, it's not that I don't hate all of it. I just... It just seems they they regurgitate, they mm-hmm. regurgitate again and again and again the same old stuff 
Um, and I just don't, I don't get it. You know, the, mm. this is one of the things about the pandemic. You know, Banksy made this some wonderful work uh -huh. about how stop thinking of the world in this way where a hero swoops in and saves the day. Hey, man, that rhymed, man. You could take me into your collective, yeah. man. You could be a little yeah. bit more selective. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but st if you just, if you stop approaching life, like here's the ordinary people and then some something super heroic um, comes along and figures everything out. That's just the wrong way to look at the world to begin with. And what I like about the pandemic is that the way everyone has turned and goes, you know, the real heroes in the world are these doctors. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I just ha have just, to, I just can, have to. Can you just say his name one more time? Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. <laughs> uh, you do, you sound like a, you sound like a dog, a, a dog trying to open a bottle. <laughs> Are you checking TikTok or... You... Is that? TikTok. No, no. Oh. Yeah. We, it's, it's... <sighs> I mean, okay, put it this way. So, a friend of mine, he's got two kids. <laughs> okay, this, this, this put the, uh, the death to my involvement in TikTok. I was talking to a 10-year-old mm -hmm. and a 13-year-old boy. Two boys. Yes. Right? And we were chatting, and invariably, they're really into this Fortnite, you know, this computer yeah, yeah, game. Of course, yeah. Invariably, we talk about computers and, and programming and, and social media. And then um, the 13 year old, you know, I said, to, I, I asked them, I said, so are you guys into TikTok? You must be, on, mm -hmm. you know? And the 13 year old goes, uh, I am, uh, sorry, I'm not, mm -hmm. but he is. And anyway, I think it's for girls. <laughs> <laughs> so when a 13 year old boy tells you that, he thinks his 10-year-old brother is a bit sad for being on this platform, mm -hmm. and it's for girls anyway. What the hell would... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell am I going to be doing on TikTok? You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been told, yo. Yeah. I've been told that I... See that way? See that way? Yeah, well, okay, well, you you go this way. Do you know what I mean? That's it, done. <laughs> and uh, it's cre... It's, there is this creepiness to it. it it's yeah. te for teenagers or even kids. I don't necessarily want to, you know, it's not my, well, I'm not, I'm <laughs> that's, that's exactly my position also, but I, uh, I start checking it and yeah. I, uh, I don't know how to explain, but it's for mm. me, it's like, um, 10 minutes of anger for every day because I'm just going there and I was like, what the hell, what, uh, 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 I want to, uh, yeah. I just want to do it. And that's, that's <laughs> just my motivation in life better than you know uh, anything else and the, my colleagues on radio mm. they wow one of them mm. especially vlad mm -hmm. uh, he made up an account on tiktok mm -hmm. and he called himself vlad prikol there and yeah. wow every day new stuff and mm -hmm. he's got a, a little girl his daughter and I guess mm. he just decided to have a kids especially for TikTok. <laughs> you know what I mean? Guess Why it's not? every day. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> Right. Look what we got. I've got a baby. <laughs> oh, you made a baby. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, dancing and showing. Mm. Oh. I I guess one day when she, she grow up mm. like that. What the hell was that? Yeah. Yeah. The same was with Gnome Gnomich. Right, right. I'm afraid. Right. But now he's he's not so small. He's not, uh, you know, he's already understands everything. He understands how, how strange all that which mm. happens in his life. Mm -hmm. And I guess 10, 15 years mm -hmm. and he's going to kill his parents. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep Why it... you call me dwarf? Yeah. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Imagine that follows him for the rest of his life. How about that? Yeah. Everybody Everyone's knows. just gonna keep laughing at him, even when he's an adult. I just, I just have to show you, <coughs> by, uh, how he looks like. And they, they made this video for mm -hmm. voting for constitution. Hey! And he was there, yeah. 
And they're like, Gnome Gnomich, mm. how you feel yeah. about it? And he's like, yeah, I want, I want changes. That's how it's... <laughs> that is Gnome Gnomich. Okay. And yeah, that is let's his hope that epic he, fa- let's, yeah. <laughs> let's hope he grows up to be just as handsome as his father. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of sarcasm there, of course. Yeah. I don't know. I don't got nothing personal against him. I just think he's... Anyway. Uh-huh. Well, when's the last time you were back in Kazakhstan? Oh, New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you have a good time? Did you perform? Uh, yes, in my in my mother town, I performed Your in Ust-Kamenogorsk. Yeah, in hometown, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I performed there. We had uh, actually the, the the big show with the with local comedians. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the style of local comedians. Sometimes uh-huh. they're they're very funny. Uh, there was one guy he performed uh, like forty minutes, and um, not on this show, but a year before, and he had a big problem with re- remembering his his stuff. He uh, he had a short memory, and he was like, "Well, I made my, made up my." own strategy how i gonna do that so uh i took a lot of stuff like about 20 items different stuff and that was like cell phone that was like shoe and hat and toy different type uh, scissors everything glasses and he puts all the stuff on the stage mm. right before performing mm. people sitting in a crowd he just Putting all that in front of him, and it was like, "Let me explain you what I've got here." Sometimes I've got stuff I gonna I gonna tell you, but now uh, today on my show, I didn't take any you know any notes mm-hmm. to see. I just got all those stuff, and I look at every item, mm-hmm. and each item is the topic mm-hmm. I gonna talk to you. And everybody like, "Wow, mm-hmm. that's that's." Sounds smart, mm-hmm. and he starts, and he, he had twenty or twenty-five items. <laughs> on on the item number four, that was a shoe. Mm-hmm. He stops like for a minute. He was like, "What the hell is that supposed to mean?" <laughs> <laughs> and and people just starts laughing yeah. so hard. They were just he just killing it. <laughs> <laughs> But the problem is, he was not kidding. He wasn't all. kidding. He no, was no, so no. angry. Yeah. He was like, "No, I'm serious." He talks to himself. Yeah. What does that mean? What? What the shoe? Uh-huh. And I can't remember what's going next. I can't remember this, that, and he just he just throw it yeah. and leave the stage. He threw the shoe. Yes. Uh, who no, did he threw the shoe? No, no. He just he just kicked in uh, nobody, but <laughs> but he just stopped the show and leave the stage. I and love this guy. He just leave the stage, and he performed uh, instead of 40 minutes. He performed like 15. Oh my god. Yes. And he called me crazy. on the stage. He was like, well, a friend of mine, Jane, can you please? <laughs> and yeah, that was, <sighs> it was tough. But and that's the, the biggest laugh he got was when yes, he met. Yes, exactly. He, he, he should put that in his act. Yeah. He should keep that, right? Uh-huh. Great. I said that's, that's had to be a part of the show. I was like, no, I, I had a lot of jokes to say. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. How long did it take him to remember what the shoe material was? Uh, <laughs> well, I, wanna, that... I desperately want to hear the shoe material now. <laughs> you tell him that. Okay. The guy, there's a comic in Moscow. He can't wait to hear what you had to say about the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw the, the Eric Andre. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Legalize everything. Yeah. The thing I like about Eric Andre <laughs> is that you just don't know what the hell's coming next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, what? I love his... Bum, 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 bum. I like his <laughs> clips. Yeah. I like his energy. There's something about him that I really just kind of like. <laughs> He's what well, they were everybody we all had a guy like that in school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all had a guy like that in school. He would just say something or do something, and you'd be like, oh, okay, all right, just <laughs> you know, it just completely Yeah. <laughs> you know, so but um yeah, I don't know. Eric Andre. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean the uh, Eric Andre show and Jerry Seinfeld show mm. is like the most opposite thing right, which right. is happening right now right. in in comedy as 
yeah. how you feel. Because in uh, Jerry Seinfeld's show, you see how he's going to control everything from the beginning to mm -hmm. the end, and everything is under control, everything is so pr well prepared mm. and well directed. The way where he's oh, yeah? going to... Where? You know, I saw it. I mean, where he's going to go, where he's going to stop, mm -hmm. all his... How he gonna right. you know act on the yeah. stage? How he just telling the jokes? All his emotions and Eric Andre is just just like guy who is <laughs> just at no. I personally thought that Eric Andre he's got no mm, prepared text <laughs> for most. <laughs> Come on, you know that's not true, dude. Yeah, but that I mean that's how you feel it. Well, that's that. That's what you're aiming for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You're aiming for it yeah. to look like yes. you're not trying or yeah. whatever you call it. So anyway, listen. I have a number. Mm -hmm. I have a number. I can officially announce mm -hmm. that I put on five kilograms during the quarantine. Oh. Woo! Woo! I'm kind of proud. Yeah. Um. You know because um. Did I mention this last week? No. But I went on the scales, and I, I am, a, I am. This is the largest I've ever been in my life. And so it now feels you're good. the largest. And the thing is, the thing is, though, none of it has shown on the face. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all gone into my pants, mm -hmm. all of it. And uh, I feel a little bit. I surely I usually I get lost or getting a little bit chubby, but not this time. Now I know it's very unattractive for men to be talking about their weight and everything, but all I'm doing is I'm just making. An announcement. That's all. 5K needs to be shifted at least. This Buddha belly. This is like proper. This is like proper middle age coming in and kind mm -hmm. of leaning on your shoulder and going, huh? "What's up? How you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How you doing? You, you all right? <laughs> you may. Uh, you know who I am? Are uh, you?" <laughs> Are you familiar with uh, yeah with my work? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, that is an interesting thing, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of us out there, I should think. Probably got to shift a few pounds, but only for ourselves, not because society dictates for us to do it. <laughs> Let's be quite clear about that. You know. Wow, five kilos, because that's a, I mean, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, that's... How much is five kilos? That's that's not five kilos. Yeah, What's that, five that, kilos? That's a lot, but actually, I I wouldn't say so, looking at you. I know! That's the crazy thing about it. Yeah. So I thought I'd at least... Absolute like, secret get, five I, kilos. I thought I'd get, start getting the, uh, the, 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 the rabbit, rabbit, you know, the... No, I haven't. Uh, it's been redistributed... Um, it's been redistributed evenly. That's that's my genetics. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what, one uh, was one other thing I was going to say which is related to this topic actually is that um during lockdown um I think a lot of us probably spent more time on the internet than we need than we needed to. Mm -hmm. Uh but uh, I I'm just glad I didn't fall down any conspiracy theory rabbit holes, right? Yeah. Um but I did look at um, cooking and, and recipes, and I found this one video mm -hmm. <laughs> where they were saying, like, you know, how can you lose weight and everything? And a lot of people say um, sort of um, vegetable soup. Mm -hmm. If you just eat just vegetable soup for a few days mm -hmm. or a week, yeah, you got to shift. you got to lose some weight. you got to... Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm just like going, eh, whatever, and, it, and you're just kind of semi-conscious, flicking through YouTube like a lot of us do. Oh, I hope it's not can't just be me. <laughs> and I found this video, Zing, with vegetable soup. Yeah, it what was, a, was that? It was what? It was a, it was, <laughs> it was a, a good old boy. He had like a kind of I don't know if he had a mullet. But he had, like, you know, he's a, he's a good old southern boy from yeah. America. Yeah. America. By the way, I officially am just going to be calling America America from America. now on. No, that's just, <laughs> uh, that's how I'm going to roll. <laughs> I don't care what anyone thinks. Because it's America. Um, and so <laughs> this guy had a recipe 
Mm -hmm. And he was kind enough to show us how to make this soup, this yeah. vegetable soup. You got to take old vegetable. <laughs> I personally don't like only black beans because they're black. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> do take all. Do <laughs> you take all. You got me. <laughs> oh, you clicked on the video that said racist vegetable <laughs> soup, yeah? yeah. You saw it too. Hang on. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> then he's 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 whatever he's telling he's telling us about the soup. Better not be any goddamn black beans. In <laughs> anyway, so uh, <laughs> he's telling us about the soup, and then he said he said that this soup mm -hmm. was actually given to inpatients uh, to obese to go into heart surgery. Oh. And he uh, was down in Baton Rouge, which I think is Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I just... <laughs> now, I don't know if this affected my appetite in any kind, <laughs> but just, just, just meditate on that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Too obese to go into heart surgery. So your heart is failing to work and you're going to die, so you need surgery. Mm -hmm. But you're too fat to have the surgery. <laughs> that uh. I, I I know, and there he is. That he he just kept talking about cabbage <laughs> and black bean or not black bean, whatever it was, and yeah. I I just disappeared and just started thinking, holy crap, <laughs> how fat, how fat. And out of control must your eating be yeah. to have even put yourself in this position. <laughs> and is there no shame? Um, is there, is it just, and I know, see, Russian people would never fall for this. There's, this this would be, you don't get people like that in Russia. Russian people take their their food quite seriously, really. They try to be kind of healthy. Um, as a, I mean, not everybody. Okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> but boy, I, I that's guess, a, for me, that's a new level of fat. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's just when you got some weight, when you when you're just like already like too big mm. and too fat and just one moment just bombs in your brain and you're like, well, I see no reason <laughs> just, you know, yeah. to turn back. Yeah. <laughs> just go straight to this because I like it. Mm. I like this food. Mm. This food likes me, mm. <laughs> and we're gonna have, we're gonna have to do that. It's, it's interesting you said the two words together: too fat. Mm -hmm. What is too fat? There is no such thing. Mm. Too is too fat when your own organs stop working, or is too fat when uh, trained surgeons can't even operate on you is that too fat yet are you too fat if you i just blew my mind girl <laughs> i want to see some of these people now oh <laughs> <laughs> no i don't i really don't <laughs> but i remember um, when i was in the united states i was so shocked with how it's, everything is so sweet i mean if, mm. if you if you <laughs> If you just don't think of what what you got, if you just buying the same stuff you buy in uh, in Russia or in Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. whatever, um, mostly the same things, but they have really they've got more more sugar, mm -hmm. they've got you know more fat in it, mm -hmm. and I just I just think that well we all know that sugar is kind of a drug for people, so that makes you buy more and more. And well, I think in Russia it's uh, it's gonna be pretty pretty much the same pretty soon. Yeah. Well, it's already the same. Mm. I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it, the sugar thing? Because uh, like you, she made you coffee with sugar, and you're like, no, 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 no sugar, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is. I, I have only really found out. It's only really come out as public knowledge that sugar is actually the death. It's the killer. It's the mm -hmm. thing that's destro destroys everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sugar. Yeah, makes you fat. Mm -hmm. Gives you diabetes. It's addictive. Yeah, it's hard to control. 
and I, I'm just amazed that um, that uh, I only found out about it in my adult life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, people were picking on other things. I remember my granddad always saying, my granddad was American, mm-hmm. and he would always say, salt, that's white death. Yeah. They call it white death. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm seven, and I'm sitting there going, huh? <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to add a little bit. To the, can I, he's like, what are you talking about? It's amazing how the sugar lobby must be so powerful mm-hmm. because they've blamed everybody else yeah. on... <laughs> Making the world fat and unhealthy. Actually, it's all this time it's been sugar. Yeah, all this sh- uh, sugar lobby. They they actually made up all those fake ideas that mm. the salt is bad, yeah. cocaine is bad. That's <laughs> <laughs> all this goddamn sugar lobby. Yeah, can I just stop you there? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely blame it all on the Colombians trying to sell cocaine. <laughs> that's right. What a that's a brilliant tactic. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> all those movies, Pablo Escobar. Yeah. God, I love it. I love it. What a great idea. What if cocaine oh, is actually really healthy? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just you know, yeah. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. <laughs> it's got, I want no, no, I want all people just be healthy. <laughs> That's my idea, and they, I've got a lot of money uh, from that. I don't know why. Yeah, because for me it's medicine. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for weight loss. <laughs> that I love that idea that someone from the sugar lobby went to see Pablo Escobar mm-hmm. and said, "Okay, let me tell you what you're going to do. <laughs> uh, let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to you're going to create an empire yeah. of cocaine trafficking and that's going to distract from all the harm that sugar mm-hmm. <laughs> is doing in the world." I love that idea. That's another movie, another great movie idea. How about that? Or at least a sketch. (laughs) But I decided that we're living in, because obviously throughout um, human civilization, there's eras, there's ages, the Bronze Age, the Stone Age, you know. um, I think we're living in the age where you go into some cafes Mm -hmm. and some cafes people in the cafe still don't know what a flat white is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they've got the other ones, but only half the time do they even know what a flat white is. So I'm waiting for us to get to a point where every, all the cafes know what a flat white is, because I would like one very much, please. Yeah. You know I'm, I've got one story about that, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I performed, I had a gig in, uh, uh, at the gear. You heard this about this place, no? At the gear. <laughs> Is is a small republic inside of uh, Krasnodar region. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. And um, Adige is very small and very far from, from all this, <laughs> those centers, you know, from, from out of, from, you know, big cities. Mm-hmm. And so I came to, I came to cafe. And I just wanted them to grab coffee and just leave. And uh, I saw that in this cafe, and that was the, the name was just coffee of the place, just mm-hmm. coffee place. I came there and I saw that they've got a note where they explains all all the naming mm-hmm. they've got. So they're like latte, like coffee with the milk. Which is mixed. Oh, and, yeah. oh that's yeah. nice of them. Cappuccino. Isn't it? What is cappuccino? What is American? What is flat white? Oh. All those explanations, of, like from Wikipedia. Lovely. Yeah. Love it. You know, very detailed explanation. And there was a guy who was standing straight in front of me, waiting for, for an order. And um, he was waiting to, to the moment when he, he could order, actually. And the guy. Uh, bar man, he was like, "What are you gonna take?" Um, asked his this guy, and he was like, uh, "Like after a few minutes, all those readings, he was like, coffee." <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and 
at the barman, at the barman was like, <laughs> what kind of coffee you want? <laughs> and the guy said, what kind you got? And he was like, maybe you want latte? <laughs> and the guy said, I'm serious, the guy said, what the hell is latte? Oh, oh no! <laughs> and I was like, damn, all this place, man, is made for you to to study, to oh. see, to understand. Oh. What does it mean? And you have no idea what is that. How old, how old is this guy? Well, the, my age. Oh, no! It's not, it's not the old guy. Oh, exactly. Like, that's something my old granddad would do. He'd be like, yeah. just, can I just get a cup of coffee, god yeah. damn it? You know, it's like, <laughs> no, it's just 27, 28. When I'm, was this? Last year. Last year. Yeah. I was like, what oh, the hell was great. latte? Can that I just great. have coffee? Yeah. He still doesn't. He's he, he's he's not playing the game. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's yeah. still not playing the 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 coffee game. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, talking about coffee, actually, I remember one one more story. As um, I was uh, in uh, Novokuznetsk, oh, that's mm. the saddest place I ever. Siberia. Yeah. Yeah. And as a taxi driver, he uh, taking me from airport to the place I gonna perform. And mm -hmm. he was like, oh, oh, I don't like Moscow. Mm. That's just, he, he starts the conversation. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, uh, you know why? <laughs> like, why? He's like, well, can you imagine? I'm drinking here coffee mm. and it costs 10 rubles. Uh, <laughs> you're talking about, you know, this this coffee in a, a small, uh, small, like, I don't know, maniki. Espresso? Yeah, no, it's no espresso. Uh, like in, like a, in a little packet. In the packets, yes. Right. When, when you get three in one, they got. Right. You know this? Three oh, in one. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, three like in these one. little. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, that costs 10 rubles. Oh, God. But once, I've been in Sheremetyevo Airport. Yeah. <gasps> Uh-oh. And I wanted to buy coffee. <gasps> and it cost 350 <gasps> rubles. Oh, my God. I was like, yeah. It was mm -hmm. like, that's why I don't like Moscow. <laughs> that now all his explanation. Like, all right. Uh -huh. yeah, can you please take me to the place as yeah, fast as yeah. you can? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So and and you were talking about flat white, yeah. and flat white is something so specific. Yeah, like the taxi driver from uh, Novokuznetsk and the guy from uh, coffee place. Yeah, that just blows their mind. It would. They would think I was just, uh, I was playing. I was playing with them. You know, messing mm -hmm. with their heads or something, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's in, it's interesting, isn't it? You do get a lot of that because I'm from London too. I'm from London. I'm from the big city mm -hmm. in my country. So um, no, it's just an interesting thing of like people from smaller towns. They hold on to their 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 image of the big city and yeah. why they don't like it and why they don't live there. And it's the same in Britain. People also don't like Moscow. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm exactly. serious. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, people in small towns, they uh, how they feel about London. They mostly they don't like it or they just don't care. Well, I think your your coffee story is a perfect kind of metaphor for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, busy. You know, people. You know, I think it's the same everywhere. People are busy. The streets are dirty. Everyone's in a rush somewhere, mm -hmm. which kind of um, is kind of hinting at everybody's just interested in money or mm -hmm. or or themselves selfish which it could it might be true might be yeah. might not but you have to balance that against your own sense of ambition and and what you if you're trying to achieve anything in this life you know uh what so um the usual stuff i would say yeah like people from small towns take a dig take a little punch at london and people from london we're all uh, amoral, you know, mm -hmm. transvestites, uh, yeah. you know, 
Muslim loving, whatever. I don't know. Just names. Name calling. Mm -hmm. Name calling is the first sign of just like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of bullying and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just like, uh, whatever. <laughs> Call me all the sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Have you ever heard that one? Yeah, I heard it. Do you know what I mean, Zrin? As soon as somebody starts calling you names, like immediately I, I already start to switch off because I'm just like, is that, mm -hmm. is that all you've got? Mm -hmm. You've got no argument. You've got no... Mm -hmm. This is going nowhere. Well, all right, that's all we have time for. Zrin, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that was Big English Stand-Up Podcast. We will see you again real soon.